first segment of the BTS vlog for today anyways uh, it is 23 hours and 27 minutes into the day of uh, Friday March 25th 2016 yeah I was supposed to do work earlier uh, you know to vlog earlier but the demo didn't actually happen I usually get up uh, check what needs to be done And then uh, go back to my bed to start the day. But I didn't end up doing that. I ended up uh, coming right to the research desk uh, and uh, beginning the day. I was supposed to vlog, but the initial stuff that I had to do uh, took so long that by the time I was done, I had to leave for church. And I will bring you to church with, with me next week. And you can sort of get an idea of what uh, the church is like. And I'll ex then begin explaining how uh, the church actually fits in with the research. Because there is a connection with the research and the church. So, uh, I still have, uh, I think, another uh, week or so of, uh, of source checking to do. So here's what happens. Let's say you find out someone has put out some information. You take your notes. In there, they provide you uh, maybe uh, a couple of references you want to take notes on. You take those notes. You go out. You find what you can find on those notes. So, in other words, you're finding more sources sources based on these notes. This is how you qualify what's being said in a particular speech or a lecture. Is you don't sort of say, "Okay, yeah, this guy is right," or say, "Oh, this guy is wrong." You allow the, the research to sort of dictate that. And so you have to go out and find more independent sources. I'll give you an example here. Uh, watching Alex Jones. Again, no opinion. You have to go in there with no opinion. You have to, it doesn't matter what they're saying. You have to go in and sort of just listen to what they said, take your notes, and go on. You go do a general search not looking for anything on uh, Alex Jones. What do you find? Good, bad, uh, you know, everything. You start looking at all the various different things that pop up, or maybe nothing pops up. I mean, this is the, the case with uh, the comparison to Donald Trump and, um, and Hillary Clinton. Is uh, I've done the, the search for Hillary Clinton, done, done the search for Donald Trump. Nothing really shows up on Donald Trump. It's insinuations here, conspiracy theories there, but nothing really, you know, you know smoking gun. Hillary Clinton, on the hand, on the other hand, is smoking gun as in Benghazi, um, campaign finance fraud. Uh, I mean, the number of amount of uh, the amount of smoke actually coming off off of Hillary Clinton in terms of you know the smoking gun thing. This is not a smoking gun. This is a forest fire, and there's smoke so much for there's so much smoke that you know it, 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 when you're seeing so much smoke, you get a there's no way there can be that much smoke without being without there being a fire there. In other words, that's what we're trying to sort of say here. And the thing is, is as you go further and further into it and check the, even their back sources, you find more and more. You find, you know, she's just got her, she, she there's so much smoke coming out, uh, there's so much smoke coming out, there, 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 there has to be a fire there. There's no way that she is not on fire. I mean, so this, you know, in terms of what, what your candidacy, who, who do you go for? As a candidate for for, for a, a politician, I said, "Well, me, my choice is that I, I go for the lesser of two evils. You know, which one is not is going to be 
not bad for the United States, you know. And they're not going to be good, but they, uh, you, you want it to be not bad. I mean, is Hillary Clinton with all that smoke there? She's going to be really bad for the United States. Donald Trump is not bad for the United States. So the uh, choice is not that, that I, I I didn't do the searches. I did the searches. Just nothing is showing up except for um, uh, some of these sort of uh, so-called um, empty statements where you'd go do the background check and there's nothing there. I mean, this is the thing. Every time you come in and do, you, you get a bit, a bit of information coming in, you have to source that information. You have to know where does it come from. Well, who's putting it out? Well, uh, has it been paid for? Is Why is this person coming forward? What do they believe? What do they understand? I mean, you go into the conspiracy theories a lot, and it's Bush this and Bush that and Reagan this and, you know, Reagan that. And every so often, as you go through and do the research on, on conspiracy theories, let's say like the Illuminati, you pop up with Council on Foreign Relations, you pop up with, uh, with uh, uh, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton. In other words, even, even, even uh, Jimmy Carter... Barack Obama, but they're not really mentioned on the news over and over again or in these particular documentaries. The people who are out front all the time are always Bush, Bush Jr., uh, and Reagan. Those are the ones that are particularly talked about a lot. And then they begin to want, they realize that if they're only talking about Bush and Reagan, then this particular piece of information that's coming forward is being put for a per per person who is on the Democrat side, on, on the on the Democrat side of the aisle. They're not Republicans because, well, if they were Repu if they were Democrats, I mean, if they were Republicans, they, they would be talking about uh, Clinton, Carter, and um, Obama being part of Illuminati because, because they do show up in these Illuminati files. So it's just they're not prominent in these files. They're not talked about the way. Uh, 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 Bush and Reagan are. In other words, it's almost as if they're looking exclusively at Bush and Reagan and they ignore that Clinton and uh, uh, Jimmy Carter and Obama are also part of the same picture, that they're part of the same uh, issues uh, surrounding this whole thing called the New World Order. Now, the thing is, is that these are conspiracy theories. Well, why are you looking at conspiracy? Don't you know they're, that these are completely fake? And well, Yes and no. I mean, just because it's not that this is the way propaganda works. Propaganda, it, it, from whatever it's coming from, is not always false. And that's what I'm saying here. And this is why the notes are so important because something may slip. These people, some of these people who are indeed crazy, they're not, they're, they're, they're saying it all. But they may have come across information that you haven't seen in your research. And it may incidentally be in there. That they may put it in there. have no idea why that, that they put it in well, This is part of the whole package here. And you put it in as part of the package. And as you do, go and take your notes on these various different packages that are presented, initially nothing comes up. But in the end or at some point in time down the line, it could even be a year down the line, taking notes, uh, what pops up? You gotta now have a connection. You have the note will pop up or something you'll write into it'll catch your eye in uh, 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 one of the lectures or one of the sources and go and you go back to your note and go, ah because it, it, it pops up in your mind. I see a connection. And you go back and you start looking at these connections. And then uh, then as you start filling in the details, you know, gathering the pieces of the puzzle if you're doing a good enough job, if you're doing the right job, the picture will appear. You'll actually see something there, or you won't see something there. Your research will either say, yes, there's something here more to investigate, or it will show, no, there's nothing here more to investigate. And this is the same with Donald Trump. I've done three, works, three, three weeks worth of investigation into Donald Trump. There's nothing there. So it's not that I'm going to stop, it just... I'm going to backlist uh, Donald Trump. He's not going to be uh, actively searched for in terms of uh, the background sources. Hillary Clinton? i got an entire list to go through. I mean, there's a huge amount there. So, 
anyways, uh, I'm going to leave this here for now. And I'll probably come back uh, later on because I'm going to be up all night again. This is going to be another all night study session. Uh, I do have to go through a lot of my sources. Uh, I'm still working on my diet, so we'll talk about, physio the, about diets and physiology probably in the next uh, segment. Anyways, uh, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next segment, and uh, take it easy. Well, no, I am not just starting my day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for the Catholics, it's Easter Saturday. It's the Easter weekend. And uh, uh, I'm still working today. It's not that, it's just that starting the day uh, has taken over four hours you know, of milling about and just sort of looking at different things. And so, yeah, I'm a little, little delayed in starting the day. So uh, it is 20 hours and 11 minutes into the day of Saturday, March 26, 2016. Yeah. And, uh, trying to remember what we were talking about. Now we're talking about, uh, I remember we were talking about, uh, physiology and diet. And one thing you should know about diet, diets are, and diets, right, diet and diets, they're two different things, sort of. Uh, Diets are the entire uh, overview of the industry of, you know, uh, the low-calorie diet or this diet or that diet, you know, that describe how you're going to eat. Uh, so there's, and then there's also the, they're titled after purposes, low-calorie diets. So you want to have low calories. Then you want to do, there's a high-protein diet where there's low carbs and high-protein. And... If you uh, sit down and study these programs and say, start, start looking at the research, uh, from, an observe, from, from an objective perspective, an objective perspective uh, what I've found is that you need, this is what I said before, you need a balance of proteins and carbohydrates. But the problem is depending on the physical activity you're doing, uh, the balance, right, the balance that you need changes. It's not, it's not standard for everybody. Some people need more carbohydrates, some people need less carbohydrates, some people need more protein, some people need less protein. And it could be low carb, low, you know, low carb, that's, that's, that's your carbohydrates, that's your starches, basically. So low carbohydrate and low protein. That might be a diet necessary for somebody, you know, for for for, for a particular type of per, uh, body type. Uh, I know uh, a lot of people who are very big and they want to try to lose weight, and they've got some height to them in, in addition to their heft, to the the physical body size. So we'll consider height versus weight, uh, sort of height versus width. A lot of times there is a standard width that goes with the height. So some people will be tall and skinny. Some people will be tall and heavy set, or in between. Uh, regardless of which, the height, which never really indicates a weight problem, will give you an indication of how much protein and uh, carbohydrate your body actually needs. In other words, there's a standard minimum uh, depending on your height. Uh, a shorter person will need less food and a taller person will need more food. Right, this is uh, a standard uh, view into the physiology of digestion and how uh, the body uh, takes up its nutrients. And, but the problem is, is when the width becomes too significant indicating uh, obesity. There is an indication that, say, oh, I need to reduce my body weight by X amount. And they, they talk about weight rather than they talk about width. It's actually more correct to talk about width than it is to talk about weight because, uh, I'll give an example. Uh, a person is doing a lot of heavy uh, construction work. They're lifting a lot of heavy work. They're do, they're, their labor is very physical, very manual. They will see 
in addition to the appetite increase, they'll see a width increase. But the width increase is, is a required increase depending on the load, the amount of work they're carrying on a daily basis. If they're doing a lot of heavy work and they're carrying a lot of heavy loads, the body width will, will adjust uh, to compensate for that load that the body is carrying. So this, the increase in width is not necessarily an obesity issue, but rather a, 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 a response of the body to the physical load that the body is carrying on a day-to-day -day basis. So it bulks up so that it doesn't get crushed under the weight of the heavy things that you're carrying. Because if it doesn't bulk up, if it doesn't add uh, layers of fat and muscle to uh, your, uh, your, basically your vertebrae, uh, then you'll start crushing your vertebrae. This is where a lot of people have back problems because if they're lifting heavy things and their back is not properly developed. And, this is the, and there aren't muscles for the back that as you walk or you carry heavy things, uh, these muscles all the way back up to, up to the shoulder blades begin to develop. And this puts on width. I mean, this is how uh, I got up to double extra large. Is that I started off as, as a large, and when I started walking, I was a, I was a large, and now uh, uh, close to 15, 16. I started walking in 2000 as a regular basis. I gave up my car, and I stopped driving. And 2016, so 16 years later, I've gone from a large to a uh, double extra large. Why? Well, when you're carrying 80 pounds of food on your back, if you're only a large, uh, your body needs to adjust to that particular level. And well, what I watched as my body increased from large to extra large and putting on bone, putting on muscle mass, my weight went up. I was typically 170, 175 uh, prior to walking. Now after walking, uh, I'm uh, 240 pounds solid. Yeah, 16 years later, I'm 200. 40 pounds up, but it's not, it's not fat, it's not stomach, it's not, you know, a, a, a sort of this, this sort of a expanding width that would, would, that would be defined as obesity. It's a resp body response to the physical weight that I carry on a weekly basis. And you can see the same thing in construction workers or people who work uh, very physical or manual labor jobs, that they start bulking up. Uh, this was true of uh, farm laborers, uh, particularly women. Uh, you know, they were always making fun of these sort of uh, these women from Russia, where they had the they had the head, head scars off, uh, and they were very big and bulky. Well, why were they big and bulky? Because they were working on the farm, and the farm work is very labor intensive. The agricultural work is very labor intensive, and the body responds to this. And the thing is, is that we can go into the animal world and find analogs of how diet affects certain people, certain different animals. And we can understand this back through organic chemistry, is that organic chemistry, in terms of our carbohydrates, we have two different types of carbohydrates. We have a simple sugar. All carbohydrates are basic, carbohydrates are basically break down into sugars. And this is why you have people freaking out about sugar. Although they don't necessarily understand the chemistry of it. The chemistry of sugar is, is it's two fundamental types that the body uses. It uses a simple sugar, a mono and disaccharide, that's, uh, that's basically fructose and glucose. And then there are complex sugars known as uh, polysaccharides. Uh, the polysaccharides uh, are the starches, they're the fats, they're the oils uh, that are in the body. And they cause, uh, often, they're often, often referred to as triglycerides, uh, and they cause a lot, these are, are the ones that cause a lot, of, a lot of problems, particularly in diabetes, because, well, a simple sugar is just a simple sugar that passes through the body, and actually the, the brain uses glucose as, as one of its primary fuels. Uh, the the uh, polysaccharides take a much longer time to break down in the body uh, and require a lot more energy because instead of being one saccharide or one sugar, as you have the mono and disaccharides, right? Glucose and fructose are, mono and disac are monosaccharides because they're a single sugar. Uh, table sugar is a disaccharide because it's got, it contains both the glucose and fructose. So this is uh, your, uh, your mono and disaccharides. They're very simple. They pass through the body very easily. Uh, and there's no particular issue with them. It's the polysaccharides, which are many uh, mono and disaccharides linked together in a chain, 
how these chains laying up like in, like in flour or, 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 or in starches, how these chains link up determine how digestible they are. And this is where you find people have problems digesting uh, wheat gluten and other things like that, these different wheat proteins or other uh, uh, flour derivatives. And this has to do with the fact that uh, uh, you're dealing with large chains that have to, uh, of molecules that have to be broken down into simpler uh, chains of molecules. And this takes the, the, the uh, this take, requires energy. But if your body does not absorb the, ener the, the, uh, the nutrients on a, on a proper rate, in other words, let's say you, you bring in a lot of food, starches, and this is what we, have, we see in the thing like grass eaters, like hippos, cows, uh, uh, the green leafy vegetable eaters. What do we see about cows, hippos, elephants, and all these? They're big, massive animals. Why? Because in order to get in the amount of nutrients they need to bring, to bring in, they need to bring in a huge amount of, of, of carbohydrates. Another many, many and we see this with with the lowland uh, gorilla, who is pr who, uh, the primates are considered typically to be meat eaters. And we see they have a diet of primarily, let's say, let's call it celery. That's a, they're, they're a green leafy vegetable eater. Green leafy vegetable eater. Um, what do we see? We have they have these huge bodies, very fat stomach. Why? Because in order to get the nutrients they need, they need they need to eat a huge amount of food. And this is to say, you look at a person who's big, who, who's tall, and they're they're overweight. They're they're considered to be very big. And these these people are they're they're tall and they're really really big. What do you see about them? They eat primarily primarily potatoes, cooked vegetables, and breads. So what are the potatoes, uh, cooked vegetables, and breads? Those are all high starch foods. And so you see the same body type, the same big body type you see in the animals that are that are high starch eaters. You see this in the same the same thing you see in uh, in human beings. Where what do we see if for the animals that are tiny that are small? The ti animals that are tiny and small, like the, the small monkeys, they're primarily fruit eaters and they're sh and they're sugar eaters. They're, e they're eaters of single uh, of modern disaccharides. They're very hyper. They have a lot of quick energy, and this is how they live. And so what happens if you want to go to a uh, a, a, a lower type of body type, like we want to use the animal kingdom as an example, if you want to have a smaller hyperactive body type, then you're going to need to switch from the saccharide, the, the polysaccharides to the mono and disaccharides. And this is how diet, according to organic chemistry and uh, looking at the uh, natural models, this is how you develop your diet like this. But most diets are not even remotely uh, based after these scientific models. They're based off of various misconceptions about organic chemistry. So, it's difficult when you're talking about diet to actually pinpoint and say, okay, this diet's good, that diet's good, because more often than not, each diet has a specific problem, and one of the major issues with diet is that no one diet can be can be prescribed for for all types of people. There are a whole variety of different types of people, and that means there's a variety of different types of diets that are required in order to deal with the physiology and the different types of physiology that you have in uh, medicine. So, uh, anyways, I'm gonna leave this here for now, and I will talk to you uh, in the next segment. We'll see what we'll be doing from there on out. So. Uh, I'll probably be uploading uh, a large chunk of this, the, the, the next clip into the computer because the computer's got nothing to do, so I'll probably do that. And I'm also going to do some uh, uh, some of the review work so I can uh, write up the ne get the next set of uh, 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 next uh, set of episodes out. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, week after week with no vacation. <laughs> this is the result. All right, I'll see you in the next segment of the Big uh, Big Bang Theories. BTS vlog. All right, take it easy. Welcome. Welcome to the library. I am the library.
I am the professor. And professor of what? Professor of physics. Oh, say, can you see? Speech rules here at Democratic Earth.